Believe it or not, with my ridiculous Canadian clothing brand, KBud, as you can see behind me, I've had $70,000 months for my brand. Now this is the third video of a series I'm doing. The first video was called How I Made My First $1,000. The second video is How I Made My First $10,000. And in this video here, I'm talking about my first $70,000 month for my brand. For brands that have never done this or never even come close to 70K months, I wanna give you a glimpse into all of the details of what this actually looks like to go through and what you can expect to experience because for sure, I believe in you, you're going to do this for your own brand eventually. So I'm gonna share with you very openly exactly how I marketed my brand to $70,000 a month in sales, exactly what it looked like on the back end running my brand to get it to that point. And I think that this video is going to just give you so much insight. Here it is. Apparel Success is sponsored by my buds over at Design Crowd. And if designs are something that you struggle with, I recommend that you try them out. You post a project on Design Crowd. Sick designers from all over the world are going to compete for your project. You choose the winner, then you get that design plus revisions. I've literally sold thousands of these designs on my website and I got them all made through Design Crowd. If you're interested, head over to designcrowd.com forward slash apparel to learn about the special offer that I have for you, or just use the discount code apparel when you post a project on Design Crowd. Okay, so after this video, I highly recommend going back and watching the first two videos of this series. The first one was how I made my first $1,000 for my brand. The second one is how I made my first 10,000. And this is the third and final, how I made my first $70,000. And just a recap here, in that first video, how to get from zero to $1,000 a month in sales, I talk mostly about how it's all about the product market fit. Most brands who aren't getting any sales at all for their brand, it's because they haven't established a product market fit right. Then working your way up from 1,000 a month in sales to 10,000 a month is about repeating what's working, being more consistent, unlocking the compound effect and being consistent over several months. Then how I got from 10,000 to $70,000 a month in sales looks even different than that. And there's a saying, what got you here won't get you there. And it couldn't be more true with my experience. It took me roughly four or five years to get to the point where I had my first $70,000 a month for my brand. And let's talk about the marketing strategy first, because I'm sure that's what you're most curious about is how did you get your brand to have enough sales to even get to $70,000 a month? Well, the big difference going from $10,000 a month in sales to 70,000 is that to get to $70,000 a month in sales, I had to diversify the ways that I was driving traffic to my website. Now you don't have to do this yourself. There are plenty of people who will tell you that one traffic source is enough and that may work for your brand. But I'm telling you how exactly I made my first 70,000 and it wasn't through just purely an organic strategy. The way that I did this was there were four main ways I was driving traffic to my brand. The first way was through my organic strategy on social media. And we could view this as roughly 30% of all of the traffic that I was driving to my brand and all of the sales that I was generating was 30% from the organic strategy. Another 20% was from my email list. From sending out regular emails to my email list two or three times a week, I'd built up a customer list of over 10,000 people that had subscribed to my email list, all of my old customers, sending them promo codes, sending them offers, telling them about new releases every single month. That contributed another 20% of sales that month for my brand. So that would be 50% of all of the sales was just through my organic strategy on social media and through my email marketing. Then another 20% of the sales that I was getting for my brand came from the Facebook ads and the TikTok ads that I was running for my brand. So the organic strategy, the email strategy and the ads contributed to around 70% of all the sales for my brand. And the remaining 30% of the sales for my brand was all word of mouth. People seeing the ads who are fans of my brand telling their friends or sharing it with their friends in the DMs or just people wearing my brand around the campfire at the cottage. Because at this point, four or five years in, my brand had gotten out there. People were talking about it with their friends. They were wearing it out and about. And so sales were kind of just rolling in through word of mouth as well. And so for me to get to that point of $70,000 a month in sales was really a combination of four different strategies all working in unison synergistically to drive a total of 70,000 a month in sales for my brand. For the ads that I'm running, it's almost all retargeting ads. Retargeting everybody who's been to the website, everybody who's added to the cart, but maybe not checked out yet. Everybody who's visited the TikTok account and engaged with the TikTok account. 
everybody who's visited the Instagram account, engaged with the Instagram account, retargeting all of the organic traffic that you're driving to your social media accounts was huge in being able to run ads and still make a profit from them. Then another absolutely massive factor in my ability to get to $70,000 a month in sales was cutting out products for my brand that kind of move but don't sell really well and basically only selling the bangers for my brand. So I got rid of all the products that I had, I had 60 different products on my website and a lot of them just didn't really sell that well. And I basically looked at what was selling best, like the top 20% of products, got rid of the bottom 80 of them, stocked up heavily in the top 20% and only tried to come out with products that were truly optimal for my audience. For your own brand, it's okay to go through a period where you're experimenting to see what works and what your audience likes. But once you lock into that and you see, okay, clearly this one sells the absolute best, only sell the bangers. The reason why you only wanna sell the bangers is because why would you create a brand where you're not trying to optimize to offer the most amount of value to your audience? That's what you're trying to do here. So optimizing your products so that you're only selling the products that the people actually want was absolutely huge for me to get to this point. Now, getting to this stage of $70,000 a month introduced new problems to me that I had never anticipated or expected. As you grow your clothing brand, you need to develop your operational scale. You develop all sorts of problems on an inventory level, on an order fulfillment level, on a customer support level. As more and more orders are coming in on a regular basis, it's very easy to get overwhelmed trying to fulfill all of the orders and keep up with your marketing strategies. Another thing to mention here is that a lot of brands expect to blow up to like a million dollars in sales within the first year or something. And they don't understand that if you're an inventory based brand and you're fulfilling all these orders yourself, that you have to have enough inventory on hand to sell a million dollars worth of clothing. And so I had to invest in all the overhead to stock up on all that inventory to be able to even sell $70,000 worth of clothing. Right as I hit the $70,000 a month mark, I had to have friends coming over to help pack orders. I literally had my mom helping me pack orders because I literally just couldn't do it myself. And it was right at that $70,000 a month mark where I decided to switch to working with a fulfillment company to help me fulfill all of the orders for my brand because it just became too much to do it on my own to run all of the marketing for my brand and handle every other little detail of what was going into my brand. It's so important to know that you're allowed to scale up slowly. One of the benefits of scaling up slowly and growing your clothing brand slowly over time is that as you grow your brand, you're going to introduce more logistical complexity and you're going to be able to handle that logistical complexity much better if you ease into it rather than just throwing yourself into it and growing to that amount like overnight. Now, if you were looking at my brand from the outside while I was hitting the $70,000 a month, you'd look at it and you'd say, that looks so easy. What the hell is he doing that I'm not doing? It doesn't make any sense and it may cause some frustration in your head. You'll look at a brand that's doing $70,000 a month and be like, what the hell are they doing that I'm not doing? And I know that you're feeling that because that's what I was feeling when I first started up and I was looking at other brands that were succeeding. Well, from the inside, as the clothing brand owner who's hitting a $70,000 a month, what it looks like is you've really locked into your systems and everything is really systematized. So when it comes to my social media marketing strategy, I've got it all figured out and everything's just being pumped out regularly. I'm used to that. At the same time, running ads, I've been running ads forever and I'm just basically tweaking my ads, setting up the retargeting ads and running them. I've got the emails all scheduled and they're going out for the month. And it's nice, this nice well-oiled machine. Another really important thing to mention here, and this might be the most important point of the whole video, is that a lot of clothing brands are simply just rowing in the wrong boat. They're fishing in the wrong pond. What I mean by this is that their brand they're going after the wrong opportunity. There is no market for what they're trying to sell. They're trying to create a brand for something that doesn't exist. And with my clothing brand, I was, I guess, lucky enough or smart enough to sculpt my brand towards an audience that actually was able to identify with it. They had a strong emotional appeal to my brand and there was real value being exchanged there. So if you think that you've sculpted your brand perfectly, that you've added all the necessary little details to your website, to your social media, and you've been consistent online and nobody's buying from you, it's highly likely that your brand is geared to people 
who just simply don't care about what it is that your clothing brand is offering. And you have to recognize that most of this, when it comes to selling your brand, is all about identity appealing to identity and how somebody wants to feel about themselves, how they think about themselves, what they associate themselves with. And if your brand is created as something that people don't want to associate themselves with or just don't have any desire to, then you're always going to struggle here. And I know that the follow-up question here is how do I know if I'm creating a brand for a target market that actually wants what I'm selling and the best way that I can answer this is that it's through trial and error. You'll only know through trying it out and through testing different brand concepts, through testing different products, through testing different taglines, and also using your intuition and doing some research. For me, I had a really great understanding that my brand was going to succeed because simultaneously as I was launching my clothing brand, there was a TV show that was booming in Canada called Letterkenny Problems, and it was the exact same concept of that TV show that was trending and going super popular that my brand was basically targeting the exact same people. So I knew that my brand was on trend. It really helped me understand what my brand was all about, seeing that TV show and understanding that TV show. And I understood how to build a brand for a particular audience. So having that intuition and understanding that there is a difference between creating a brand for yourself where you just think it's cool versus creating a brand for an audience where there's a true need, a true identity that you're connecting with is a massive distinction that you need to make. I hope that this whole video series helps take your brand from 1,000 to 10,000 to 70,000 and beyond, and I really hope that you enjoyed. If you're struggling to grow your brand, I highly recommend you check out the Apparel Success Mastermind. It's a monthly subscription where we do exclusive live streams every month. You get access to all of my courses, direct access to me, and access to a supportive community of other clothing brands. To learn more, head over to apparelsuccessmastermind.com and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.